I, I get I get bored easily, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I had to start. I started um, giving myself stars when I ate well. I'd give myself little flowers, and then if I did something bad, I'd put a frog on it. I think it's so important to do whatever it is that helps you be healthy, you know. And for me, stickies. <laughs> 51-year-old Jane Titus spends a big part of each day fighting high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Two years ago, Jane had a stroke, and doctors say high blood pressure and cholesterol are two of the main risk factors. It was a wake-up call for Jane to change her lifestyle. Now she participates in the cardiovascular prevention program at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital. Every six weeks, she visits the director of the program, cardiologist Dr. Merle Meyerson to review blood test results. Your good cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, is 46, but anything above 40 is good. I think when we started, yeah. it was even lower. HDL 36, 36 absolutely. Yeah, okay. When Ms. Titus first came to see me, she still had some high blood pressure, which we know is one of the risk factors for stroke. Her cholesterol was still um, abnormal. And she hadn't done any exercise. All right, well, let me just take a, a listen here. We've worked on each of her risk factors, and I think the most important thing is that uh, Ms. Titus herself has done so much to lower her risk. In addition to diet changes, Jane, who is a theater director and actress, walks with friends as part of an exercise program. And she was also put on a list of daily medications, including aspirin, blood pressure medication, and a statin drug to lower her abnormal cholesterol levels. I'm taking, uh, I'm going to take them all. I'm going to take my blood pressure, my uh, aspirin for heart attack, and then also the, since it's one o'clock, I'm going to take the Symphostatin, which is the generic Zocor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm fine with daily stuff. At first I wasn't. It was hard when they added in the cholesterol medicine. I was a little bit like, oh God, another pill I have to take for the rest of my life. Dr. Meyerson orders a fasting blood test to be done every six to eight weeks in order to monitor her cholesterol numbers. Since the stroke, my cholesterol level expectations are much lower. I mean, I think mine were, I think it was about 160 or 175 in that range. And then now I keep it down about 120, 125 usually. So I do know those numbers, and I didn't necessarily know them before. They've become very important to me. I give everyone their numbers, and most of the time, but not all, they know whether they're at goal or not, but many don't even know that. Let me just go over your last uh, cholesterol tests. Your total cholesterol was 122, mm -hmm. but more important are the individual um, the components such as the LDL, the low density cholesterol, that's the bad cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Yours is 65. Mm -hmm. Your triglycerides are fine, they're 53, and the goal for that is under 150. The only way that I can empirically know that I'm succeeding at preventing stroke and heart attack is by keeping those cholesterol levels down. LDL cholesterol is commonly known as bad cholesterol and is most implicated in causing buildup in coronary arteries as well as in blood vessels of the brain. The goal LDL value for someone who has had stroke or heart disease is under 70. You know, the thing I always have to concentrate on getting into my diet, uh, even now, is more fruits and vegetables. You know, I just have to, as I'm sitting here fixing... Uh, <laughs> A tuna fish sandwich with cheese, which has no vegetables on it. Actually, I have some tomatoes in there. I should put some tomatoes on it. For cholesterol, I ask that patients focus on a diet of fruit and vegetables, whole grain, breads, and cereals. Meat is okay if you choose a lean cut of meat. Jane's HDL, or good cholesterol, has risen 10 points from 36 at her lowest to 46 on her most current blood test. That's a little more stubborn when we try to increase it with medications. It's also very much influenced by what you're born with. However, we know that exercise can increase it. Medicines can also increase it. And uh, also moderate alcohol intake is known to favorably influence the good cholesterol. The big thing I do for, specifically for cholesterol, is exercise. Mm -hmm. 
And then food, I just think about as overall health a lot. But it all seems to work together. It's an equation. It's what you put into your body and also how much energy you expend. Sometimes there's more stress associated with knowing you have to exercise every day. But if you can pick three days a week and stick to that, very helpful. For long-term success, Jane will need to stick with the diet and exercise changes she has made. Exercise, exercise, exercise. And Dr. Meyerson will continue to monitor her progress with non-invasive tests, such as a stress test, ultrasound, and MRI to look for a buildup of plaque in any of her arteries. Periodically, I'll speak to Dr. Brockington, we'll do maybe an ultrasound on the blood vessels here. You never know if you're going to have another stroke. You never know if you're going to have another heart attack. But I can't honestly say that I'm doing everything I can not to have another one.